Hey girls, it is just after seven on Monday and I wanted to pop in again. I told you I have a lot to catch up on. So I'll give you just a minute because I know that there's a couple of you that are gonna that are gonna come in and um, I'm gonna give you a quick sneak peek on this month's um, Palooza. Hey Dee, so good to see you. I knew you were coming. I think Gail's gonna come too. Um, quick sneak peek on Bloom and Grace. Hey Lori. Good to see you too, and Gail. Um, we'll do this quick, and then we've got a card to make and even more fun things to show you. So um, at the end of, actually, I think it's the first weekend in October, um, we're going to do, just like similar to our other Paloozas, we're going to do Bloom and Grace. And I had started this again before I left for the funeral. And so I had some bits and pieces to finish up. And then I did the first video of the set today. And I'm going to do the second one, I hope, tomorrow. We've kind of, internet's a little spotty, so I'm not sure. But I'm working on it. Anyway, we're close to being there. But I wanted to show you, because it is so much prettier in person than it is um, you know, in the little pictures they give you in the catalog. It's not half as nice as what you're going to see. So we've got um, three two-page layouts. And just like always, what I like to do is either put more photos on the page or amp it up in some way without actually changing too much of the design. Because the design in these workshops is beautiful. Nine times out of 10, I do them and I'm like, oh, it's just really, really, really pretty. So I already like it, but I do like to just just change it enough. I don't want you to have to add a lot of paper. I don't want you to have to go buy something else. I want to be able to use the workshop pretty much as is, but uh, anyway, you're going to love it. You're going to love it. So I think they are in, the first one is my least favorite. This is project um, layout number three. Okay. And you'll, I mean, of my, of the three of them, you guys know me, um, sunflowers are beautiful, the colors, and this is the brand new um, desert rose. And then I think we're going to go to this one, I think, or I, I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm just going to go and show you. And forgive me, because I don't have the flip flaps stuck down. So obviously these are kind of be moving all over the place. But you can see that on the right side page, and I'm just going to pan to the right because I've got the camera close up for the card segment. And then I realize you can't, you can't really see the whole layout because of that I moved it closer. But I use toffee ink. On edges, you know I love toffee. That's my desert sand substitute. Um, and we added four three by three flip flops, which then gives you a total of 12 photos on a page. Totally worth it, right? But what you'll see that I've mixed in, here is, let me get it straight for you. Here is the left side. Can you see this? OMG, let me grab the sheet for you or what's, what's left of the sheet? This, my people, is Desert Rose Glitter Paper. And you know we've had glitter paper for a while. We've had ordinary glitter paper, right? Literally, black, white, gold, silver. It, it pretty, right? But we had those colors in Shimmer Trim. This is stunning. Absolutely my gosh, if I could have had a Mother of the Bride dress made out of this, I think I would. Although Chelsea would probably tell me it washed me out. Right? She'd probably get after me. But it is absolutely stunning. You will love this. So what I did was incorporate it into this design. So you can see I cut out the triangle that was supposed to be there and substituted that glitter paper. Look at this. Look at even as um, kind of the photo mat, if you will, even as the mat, it's still so, so pretty. I just love, love these pages. And again, this is really their design. What I did is substitute out that desert rose because I just needed a little pop of glitter, right? You know me and my pops of glitter. Okay, so this is layout number one. Remember we added 12 photos onto that page. And here, my people, I don't know which one it is. I think it, I wanna say it's two, project number two. So here's the left page of project two. Don't you love this burlap look? Love that. And I added, of course, added some of that desert rose at the top, but it's got a little bit of wood in it. It's just, the colors are so, so pretty, right? Now, you ready for it? This is something new. I'm gonna slide it over so you can see. I hope you can see it somewhat. 
Okay, here's our 12 by 12, right? Here's our 12 by 12, ready? Dun, da, da, da. It opens up, you guys. It is an eight by 12 flip flap. So I cut the front page, cut the front page, and did a flip flap on the inside, adding one, two, three, four, five, six more photo spots. And you guys know so as I do, this could easily be um, six more flip flaps, right? Six, six by four flip flaps, and you could triple the number of photos in that page. But how cool is that? So here's your 12 by 12. One more time. Here's our eight by 12. Isn't that fun? Brand new for close to my heart. Eight by 12. So here is your layout number two. I'll try to pan to the side because I realize you're not getting a full view. This is our other one and here is our last one coming up. You ready? Okay. I'm gonna pan to the left. This is our left page of the last layout. Again, you've got this beautiful quilt pattern that I added the glitter paper to, a little, a little sprig here because it just needed a little continuity to the left. And then, oh, you guys are so fun with the hearts, thank you. And then it's got, um, I just incorporated it in all the little two by two squares. Super, super easy. It was already part of the plan to do that quilt. So I just added the, the glitz to it. Right? But here comes the Wowie on the right page. You ready? Ready for it? We did a shaker page, you guys. Seriously. We've never had a shaker page before. How fun is that? So I used the rose gold sequins, and this cutout was a part of, I'll show you, was a natural part of the workshop. So here's the, it already had the cutout for you. So all I did was make it into a shaker page. So come join our Palooza, you guys. They'll make cards, you'll make layouts, you'll make whatever truly, whatever parts of it that you want. But isn't this so much fun? We did an 8x12 flip flap, brand new size. We did a shaker page, which we've never done before. I am super geeked about how this is all coming together. So, okay, that is your Palooza sneak peek. And now we've got, here's, you know what, before we get too much further, I want to show you this. Because on the little one of the cards we're going to do, I used this. Um, wood grain paper and you're gonna see it again and again and again and again because you guys know wood grain is so versatile you can use it on absolutely anything and this is the first time we've carried a whole wood grain set of paper all by itself so this is in medium tones here let me just fan out so you can see how spectacular it is but medium tones we get lights sometimes we get that dark but my gosh if I could have this in my house you guys and then look at the mitered wood. Look at how much fun that's going to be either on a layout or look at this on that card. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at so much fun. You get knots, you get miters, you get logs. Now look at the gray. Oh, you ready? And even the whitewashed. Look at that. Isn't that spectacular? And look at this. This is so, oh, I just love it. And here's your warm, right? A whole set of grays, a whole set of all different tones of brown. And these will go with everything, you guys. Whether they're home photos, whether it's wedding, whether it's nature, whether it's literally, truly, it's such an, a nice array of neutrals that you will be absolutely amazed at what you can do with all of this wood. Truly, we've been asking and asking and asking for years. Um, and this is the first time we've ever come out with a whole set. I really wish you could see them, because this, this is just all the yellows and browns, the shading is just spectacular. And then of course the mitered, I just, uh, it's gonna be so much fun. So this will sell out. I'm kind of surprised it hasn't already, although I suspect Close to My Heart is on to us. And uh, you know what I mean? They, they probably stocked extra. But 
it is going to be carried all year long. So even if it does sell out, which it will, it absolutely will, um, you can still get it and you can get it for longer. So just know that this is in there, that this is absolutely the answer to your question when you say, well, you're going to bring a layout to me and say, I don't know what goes with this. And I'm going to say, go get some wood grain paper <laughs> because truly it's just such a nice array of neutrals that it will it will really go with anything. Just in case you missed last night, blurp, 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 this is what we made. So if you miss this shaker, um, go back and find yesterday's video and you can make it. It's all there. Oh, you guys are so fun. I'm just, your, your comments are underneath, underneath where the camera is. So I have to kind of move them up and down to be able to see them. So you guys are so much fun. But Love the beard. Get yourself some paste and a clear shimmer brush and you can make him. He's so much fun. Okay, this is our beauty tonight. And this was in another card. It was actually a spring card. Forgive me. That's how behind I am. It was a spring card in um, blues and greens. And I love the idea of having these baby little squares. Well, I thought it was, hey, Deb, good to see you guys. And tease on. Um, I saw this and I thought it was, you know which one I mean. I thought it was the stitched square. I thought it was the stitched square. And I went to grab my stitched square and I got it and I just had a regular size card out and I looked at it and I'm like, oh, that's not it. It's too big. You can't fit three on the card, right? You could on, a, on the slimline card, those long ones that they're making right now. But I wanted it on a standard size card because this is what I tend to send out, right? It's, it's just kind of what I, I make. So I want to show you. I figured it out, it took me a bit, but this is what they used. And lots of you have this already. This is the multi-square window, right? The multi-square window thin cuts, you have to cut it twice to get three, believe it or not, because I'm that picky and I want the stitching on them. Does that make sense? If you don't care that it has the stitching, then you can only have to cut it once. Good deal? But look what I did with the extra squares. So I didn't know, and I cut it a bunch of times because you know me, it's kind of trial and error. So I did this, but look at what I made with the, with the leftovers. Isn't that fun? Look at the dimension on it. Like shoot me now, right? I have some, um, the new bracket frames on order. And what I want to do, what I saw someone else do, because I don't come up with it all ever. Um, here, pretend that this is the bracket frame. She took the bracket frame and about two thirds of the length of it, she kind of centered it and then she cut off the end and she put her little sentiment like this off the side. And that's kind of what I want to do with it when I get it. So it's on order, it should be here pretty soon. But wouldn't that be so cool to like kind of have a little fancy bracket and then have the little saying on the inside. Whoop whoop. But anyway, so if you do make a mistake and cut a whole bunch of squares, don't get rid of them. You can do really cool things like this with it. Hey, Vicki, I see you popping your head in there. Okay, so going back to our little card, I love the idea of making mini, mini, mini shakers. And it says missing you, which is so appropriate for right now, right? So appropriate for right now. So um, let me show you. I thought, I honestly thought this is a brand new set that Close to My Heart came out with. Remember when they had the toilet paper sets for a while with Corona, right? We had toilet paper and hand sanitizer. We had a couple of sets of those. Well, now they came out with um, this one. And I thought, it's it's so telling, isn't it? It's got smile, you brighten my day, cheers. You mean so much to me. True friend, loyal, accepts you for who you are, honest, trustworthy. I, I just love this, you and me. It's such a good friend set. You guys, and I thought, well, and forgive me with, I'm off on a tangent again, but this is our brand new set um, that is promotional. It's a CC set, but this is our replacement for the toilet paper. It's all about friendships. And I think, honestly, um, you guys totally would get this, right? Snag this while we have it. It's a great little set to do with cards or pages, either one. But I thought I really wanted to put this on here. I really wanted that little saying to fit, but... It doesn't fit. It's so close. If I had them, if I had them going diamonds, you could come really close, right? But darn it, it wasn't quite small enough. So then, here, let me put this on so you can see the background. This is 
October's stamp of the month. And it's a really good one. This is this would be so fun to stamp in our intense black and then color all the little pieces. And you know I don't like to color, but you guys do. I know you do. Lots of you do. So you're going to enjoy this because it's kind of, right? It's all pieced together. But look at all the words. Love the words. This is totally worth getting for five bucks. Honestly, right? You are the best with all my love. Good luck. You've got this. Missing you. And that's what we're going to use today. Even just XOXO. Thanks a ton. Sending love. A great, great set for the sentiments and some fun coloring. So this is October set. So kind of just keep it in the back of your mind. Um, you know, as, as we go along, we're going to use a little bit of distress, distress Oxide. And this is only going to crack the surface of these inks. So don't expect a big tutorial today. That's not where my head's at. I got to warm up to this just a little bit. However, we are going to play with it the tiniest bit, and I think you're going to have fun. So we have logs and we have mitered. I like the mitered side. Make sure my cards go in the right way. It's centered at the bottom, right? And then we have green and sunflowers and I like sunflowers you know have you guys been in your craft rooms at all are you kind of waiting for me to lead you there don't say waiting for me to lead you there you know you get in trouble for that okay ready now here is the regular thickness you can tell what I did I put it on my trimmer and I cut it in half lengthwise Okay, don't be afraid to do that. It works really, really nicely. Okay, so I cut it in half. I used half for the sample and half for our card. Let me see if I can find an end that's open. There we go. Because gold, just like the gold shimmer brush, gold goes with yellow, right, in the same family. I'm not really a gold person, but I do like it with yellow. Debbie, you're waiting on fall weather. Oh, heck no. Fall weather's like, you know, hand-holding, walking outside, going to the park. No? You're just telling me that you're waiting for it to get cold? Is that the answer? Okay. You can use... Oh, man. I got stuff on them. Our little squares. So I have my little squares, and I put the acetate already on them because you don't want to watch me do that. It's just messy. But you can use... Um, Flip-flops, you can use acetate. You can use whatever you have, to be honest. Um, whatever works for you makes acetate. But if you don't have anything, don't forget, you've got page protectors, you've got flip-flops, and those will work just fine. So take my adhesive runner all around the back of it. It's easier. I tried to do it paper to acetate. Well, you can't see that acetate to save your life. So what I learned is lay the paper adhesive side up and put the piece of acetate on top of it. Okay, that makes it go together. You can actually see it at least. And for this, you want regular thickness foam tape, the skinny side. Okay, skinny side. This works beautifully. And all you're gonna do is follow the edge of the paper. You're gonna stick it down like that. Okay, now watch. We're gonna flip it over and we're gonna cut straight. Then you're going to go clockwise. We're just going to go around the circle. If you go like this, then you have to paper piece twice. You don't want to paper piece twice. We only want to paper piece once. Right? So you're going to go ahead and let it go. Flip it over. Cut. Oh, clockwise. I have to remind myself. How sad is that? Okay, keep going. Straight. Flip it over. This works for bigger sizes too. And the little one's hard to do on camera. Now look, I've got that unlaved to paper piece one time. I'm gonna wedge it up there on the left hand side, try to get it going in a straight line. And I'm gonna try to do this. See where that hole is? See that little hole right there? I'm gonna stick my micro tip scissors in there and cut straight. Boom, look at perfect cut every time. Okay, yay, look we did it now. Here's our little squares. Now, what we want to do, we've got a couple things here. I just cut um, three squares. The easiest when you're making your own shaker type card is to make the back 
the same size as the front. Does that make sense? Because Otherwise, you're trying to line the words up straight. It's just so much easier to do it this way than um, to not. So now this is going to be, let me make sure I did it right. If not, you can trim it. You can trim it after, so don't get too upset about it. But I think what I'm going to do is kind of put our little words. Now, this might freak some of you out just a little. I'm going to take these and I cut them. Do you see what I did? So if I was going to cut here, I probably should just cut one so you can see. This this one right here, it says, you got this. Can you see that? Am I getting it in front of the camera? Pull it off. Now, where I want to cut it, which is right here, I'm going to pull it, pull it apart, and then use my microchip scissors. And if you barely touch it, because when you pull it, you stretch those little the place in between it. Um, this will stamp beautifully, even back together, because it never changes shape. So you can easily stamp with it back together as well as apart. And I do that all the time, you guys. I am not afraid to cut my stamps, and neither should you be. That's part of the blessing of having clear stamps. Right? Okay, so I've got my little missing. Let me find my block. Okay, got my missing. We're gonna use espresso. And let's make sure I've got it on close to straight. Look at my missing. Ta-da! Right? It really stamped nicely. I tr I made sure that I had seasoned it the first time and all that good stuff in it. It um, surprised me. Missing you. Boop, boop, boop. Okay, good. You. Uh, wipe it off on my wet paper towel because I'm lazy and didn't go up and wet my my uh, chamois. Okay, so now this last one, our flower's gonna cover, so we're just gonna leave that one, we're gonna leave that one blank. Now, you could do this either way. You can put the little stars inside the square, pull it off, and do it this way, and because the outside is the same size as the front, it should line up really easily. Or you can put a little pile on this way and go that way. It, it doesn't really matter. It's whatever you find works for you. In truth, whatever you, now I am going to take my um, static and I'm going to run it over the bottom here. Just a, the tiniest bit. I don't want white powder all over everything, but it does really help. It really does keep your sequence from going crazy. Now remember, this is one of those cases for sure that less is more, right? Less is absolutely more. So we've got these baby gold stars, which are just the bomb diggity. Let's see if I can get just a couple. Whoa, that's probably too many. Right? Probably too many. Here, you know what? I'll switch them because that one doesn't have anything. That one doesn't have anything. Any words. Right? Oh, too many again. Dang it. You know, I tell people that my videos are a series of blooper reels. And they don't believe me. I think they giggle and they laugh. But you guys know the truth. They really are a series of blooper reels. Okay, let's get them all in there. I truly think that's too many. There's going to be nothing showing. Okay, come on. All right, let's give it a shot. Are you guys still with me? Are you still making cards with me here? I hope so. This is such a fun little card, and we haven't even gotten to the inking part yet. Why did I pick the tiniest little squares? I'll do the tiniest square card tonight, right? Seriously. Okay, now let's see if we can get it on there somewhat close to where it's supposed to be. Dun, da, da, da. Yay, that one worked. Okay, let's try the next one. Let's see if we can do it. Without flicking the little baby gold stars everywhere. Okay, 
One more. Oh, come on. Come on, don't flick them. Seriously. Blooper Real City. Okay. I'm not even going to try and fix that because I know better. If I try to fix it, they are going to be, look at, on my nail, everywhere. Okay. Oh, there he is. Get the little star at the top. And we'll trim where I didn't make it even. And then nobody will know, except you guys watching me. <laughs> nobody will know. Okay, there's our missing you. And now we've got the gargantuan one that's over full. Right? Here we go. Let's see if we can do it without getting the stars everywhere. All right, let's see. Come on. Look out. Okay, ready? Oh, so close. Dang it, it gets on your nail and it really, that foam tape is so sticky. Okay, ready? Ta-da! Let me make sure trim off the extra. And that's the answer, you guys know. A little trimming, a little, right? Fixes all the mistakes. Fixes all the blooper reels. All right, did I get all these? This one looks like it's got a little bit of, you know, we do want our videos to be authentic. It wouldn't be the same if I didn't show you how I messed it up. Okay, ready? So let's go ahead, put the middle one on first, right, which happens to be the U. And then missing. Oh, I'm so glad you like it, D. Missing, and then the one that's just filled with stars. Because you can. Okay, that's not so bad, right? It's not so bad, it's kind of cute, actually. All right, now, we've got, oh, we are so closing that bad boy up, because you know me, you know they'd be everywhere. Here is our flower and as you can see the difference between the two flowers right um i left this uncolored on purpose because i wanted you to see it you can do a couple of different things we've got our distress oxide and i really only pick this because the yellow that we had i didn't even have my new inks yet i was using the old inks um, and the lemon, the lemonade just wasn't cutting it. It wasn't close enough to this yellow. And I really, you know me, you know it has to match, right? It has to come darn close to matching. So I decided to try it, right? Because I had it with me. I had it with me and I was going to play with it. So here's the answer. Distress Oxide in terms of ink. Our inks are regular inks. We have dye-based inks and this is what you all have. Guaranteed. You have 40 plus colors of dye based ink. Okay. And that means they're quick dry. They soak in the paper. All of the qualities that you love and are used to are in our magnetic pads. Now, if, if you tried a couple of our pigment inks, um, right, they have the white label instead of the colored label on top. For instance, in Julep, these are pigment inks. You'll notice right away when you stamp with them, they're thicker, they're more like a, a paint consistency, and that's what truly what you should think. They're pigment, like paint. Dye, right, like ink. So when you use dye for fabric, it soaks in. When you use paint, it sits on top. That's the difference between the two that we've always offered. Now, what the difference between the distress oxides are twofold. It is a blend between dye and pigment, first of all, dye and pigment. And then the they instead of just being a distress ink, it's a distress oxide, which means it oxidizes when you expose it to water. What does that mean to you? I'm going to show you. It actually um, activates the 
pigment in it and it brightens up. You're gonna love these. They're so much fun to play with and they blend beautifully. You know how we talk about our markers and how magical they are because they make your coloring, they make you look like an expert when you're really not, right? You're out there with your Crayola strokes and our markers make you look like you're brilliant, right? The same thing with Distress Oxide. These are creamy to blend with. They're different than anything you've experienced here. So just for tonight, we are not gonna play a whole heck of a lot. I'm just gonna paint the flower because I just want you to see a tiny, tiny bit, okay? Um, and I think I might, I'll try, see if I can do this standing up. I'm not sure that I can, but we'll see if I can do it. So if now, Gail, I know you're on the video. If you have a hankering that this is something you wanna play with, if you don't already have these, um, or anybody that wants to play with any of these new products, you will need this. And you've probably, I don't talk about this mat very often, we make travel size versions for our adhesive because it's a brilliant place, right? It's all nonstick, and you can run your adhesive on it and not have to worry about getting it on anything important. But in addition to that, this is nonstick. So you could use it with your inks um, and go off the edges, which of course with a lot of these inks you'll want to, and it wipes up. Right? That's the brilliance of this. It's not just for adhesive, like our scrapbookers think. It's actually for working with ink and things that are messy. So if you don't have um, one of our, sorry, I gotta move the camera back just a little. Don't have this yet. This would be first on your next half price item or just buy it outright. It's 20 bucks. Get yourself a big nonstick workspace, right? Because you're gonna use this. Ready? Okay. We're going to take our mustard seed distress oxide and we're going to smush it on the mat. And I see that? I'm just going to smush a little because we have such a small area to color, so there's no sense in doing a whole bunch. But if I was doing a whole card, then I could smush a lot of ink. Now, clear shimmer brush. You know I like that, right? You can choose. This one that I did is flat. I used water. Okay, you can, if you want shiny, you can use the water that's in our shimmer brushes to activate the ink. It will work either way, okay? The other thing you can do is just spray spray some water on this. Spray it up, the, the ink will bubble up and activate. You'll see it change color, okay? And you can paint with it that way. It really doesn't matter, it works all three ways. It, the choice is yours. How much mess and, and truly what you've got handy, okay? so. I even went, um, I thought I'd have water brushes where my shimmer brushes are, and in truth, I do have one, I'll show it to you. This is the old one, this is the old version we used to carry. Um, very, very similar to what we have now, actually, except this one is better, this one's been updated, and you can fill the barrel, just fill it right from the faucet, which is lovely. This one, you can't, you have to actually suck the water into the barrel. but. Um, this one has alcohol in it, and it changed color of the espresso when I used it. So I thought, well, I might as well just get one, you know, that has water in it, like it's supposed to be used. Anyway, I didn't have one. I had to go raid my store and grab one. But okay, ready? So we're gonna. I'm gonna show you with both, and I'm gonna drop some water on it. You ready for the magic? Can you see it? Sorry, I don't know if I can do it with a shimmer brush. See how bright it turns? Let me see. There it goes. See how bright it is? So you choose now. Now you've got a medium to paint with. You've got shimmer paint and you've got plain paint and you literally can choose whatever your little heart desires. You can just, more pigment, more water. You can use it what, however you want. And then we're just gonna paint, right? We're just gonna fill it in. We're gonna fill in those Now, do you want to see the shimmer side? Oh, I'll wipe it off there. I got too I got too excited. I think I got a lot of shimmer. It's so hard doing this. I wish you guys were here. And then you could see we could ooh and ah together. All right, hang on. Let me see if I can, oh, if I can get it up to camera. Hang on, 
Ready? Ooh. See, if you were here ooing and eyeing, I, it'll give it a second to dry. But I did half in regular and half in shimmer. Right? Okay. You can use your regular. Trust me, this will be a lot more stunning when we... Um, when we start blending, it's not quite as exciting using a water brush because, you know, kind of just looks like regular paint. But you could see how it gets brighter when it actually oxidizes in the with the water. It's kind of fun. Something different. Okay, so now I'm not quite sure that I want to... I'm also going to use a little bit of espresso ink on the lid. And I think I'm going to use my just my water brush. And what I'm going to do is just, I used a sticker. I Actually, it's not even a sticker. It's just part of the paper. But I just want to darken this just a little bit because I want it to match a little closer to... See how quick and easy your, your inks become watercolor? Isn't that fun? I just wanted it to match the, the flowers better. Right? I wanted it to have that same kind of tone of dark. I think I'm, I didn't count on the fact that I needed to let that dry. Let me see. What did I do with my leaves? No, I guess we're not having leaves because I can't find them. I can't find them. Oh, well. Well, we'll put leaves on next time. Okay. So I hope you had fun playing with the water brushes and playing with a little bit of new ink and some old ink and making our cute little watercolor flower card. Um, if you have any questions, by all means, as usual, ask away and I will see you soon. Bye girls.